Hello, everybody. I'm Helen, and I teach at the Dorothy Benson Senior Services Center. And this is uh, week three of our uh, MOLA, the reverse applique stitching that um, is um, originated from the Kuna people off of the island in Panama. Then it spread to Panama and then Colombia and maybe some parts of South America. So um, let me show you what I, I found the picture. Um, here we go. Okay, so that's a mola right there. And um, actually that looks like a scorpion kind of, or lobster. And it is a panel that is attached to a blouse on the front. And then there's another panel on the back. So um, this, oh, it says scorpions. Okay, so um, nowadays these are sold to tourists and um, these are detachable. So if the blouse gets worn out, you know, we, they just unstitch, the, unstitch it here and then restitch it back onto a, uh, another garment. Um, so let's see if I can get this to work. Um, if you go to this website, University of Connecticut, they have um, all kinds of molas here. And it's um, quite interesting. Here's one, the themes are music and dance because originally these were the tattoo or the painted, not tattoo, the painted, um, painted on skin with earth, earth um, colors on the women's bodies. And then they were transferred or translated into fabric which was fabric that was brought in from the Europeans. And, um, <clears throat> and then originally they had geometric shapes like the ones down here. Uh, let's look at some of the geometric designs. So here are some, and uh, they're gonna have to, the, the, some of them you know, represent, um, for example, the four coils, it says that represents sea worms, okay? So, and then the colors might have meanings too. Um, so here are the ge geometric ones and um, they're quite fascinating. Uh, lots of work, lots of snipping, turning under the edges of the fabrics and um, stitching them in place. And then they decided to do lots of um, things like flowers and animals and plants that they, you know, saw around them. Um, here are some with cute little ducks. Um, you just imagine the amount of work that is involved. Usually they're like three or four layers of fabric. And of course you can have more. Um, here's one that says it's cat-like animal, okay? So it's basically any kind of design you want, basically, it's really interesting, okay? So here are some, now, if you go on the, uh, if you go on the um, computer, you can find patterns for some of these molas um, that you can, you know, download and print it out on, um, on your printer. So um, I decided I wanted to try one with, um, I, so, these people are getting inspiration from different things. Now, let me tell you what I've been doing. I've been watching a lot of, um, it's called um, explore.org. And it is, a, uh, let's see if I can find it. It is a live webcam of, um, hold on just a second, of um, live webcams around the world. And um, let's see if I can do this. And one of my favorites is the African cam webcams. For example, this is, this should, yeah, this is supposed to be a live web shot of um, Africa right now. And you see the, you know, different, I don't know if this one's a live web, it's supposed to be live. Okay. And so they have various scenes and here's another one of the river and everything. And um, it'll have actual sound with it too. So here we see the baboons, okay? So I've been watching a lot of these and it's been inspiring. Um, I kind of like the um, antelope-like 
animals they have, the deer-like animals. Um, the rhinos have been interesting too. These are baby rhinos that were rescued. So this became my inspiration for uh, one I wanted to try. And I cut out with paper the um, antelope-like creature. And I, I had just three layers of fabric right now. So I wanted kind of like earth tone. So I started doing this. And when I was doing it, I decided I didn't like these earth tones at all. I mean, I really didn't like them. So um, I think I'm gonna, since I don't have cotton fabric, I have mostly garment fabric. Um, I'm gonna have to order some cotton and I would like to try this in something like, um, not exactly black, but charcoal, a dark charcoal fabric maybe, and um, white, you know, more of a white fabric instead of this cream color and do something a little bit more contrasting and striking. I really want to do this antelope-like creature. You know, I kind of sketched this um, from one of the antelopes I saw on the African site. So I'm going to redo this one. I don't even know if I'm going to work on this one at all. But I started working on it. And, you know, it, it's kind of helpful because you learn from every piece you do. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So, you know, but I just didn't like the fabric choices I had. Now I had done one long time ago with the black and everything, but um, I just don't like the combination of colors I use, you know? It's just too dull, I think, even with trying to uh, enhance it with um, the embroidery thread, I just find it dull. So that might be the reason why I haven't finished this one, but I really should finish it, try to add more brighter colors to it. I do like the bright colors of the molas, but it's just not my, my taste and not my style. Okay, so this was the um, fun piece. It originally started out, I thought I was doing a flower. I guess it kind of looks like a flower. Um, and then, yeah, uh, and then I started adding beads to it. I don't know if you can see the beads. And the reason why is, uh, let's see if I can show you the beads, yeah. The reason why I started adding the beads is because it started to look like a pomegranate to me. Okay, so the beads are like the seeds, the inside seeds of the pomegranate. And I thought I was going to bind this, put binding on it and use it as a wall hanging. But because I use linen and different weights of linen, the linens really stretch and it just it, it really um, won't lie flat at all. It just won't. So what I'm going to have to do with this one is buy a, a stretch canvas that's about, let's see, 12 by 12. I think I measured this and it was 12 by 12. And I'll just wrap it around the canvas and you know secure it in place. And then I'm going to have to um, stitch, actually stitch around here, okay? Because this part bulges out. And I'm gonna just stitch right through the canvas and everything. And I'm probably gonna stuff um, like some batting or something in between. So it becomes more of a relief um, work. Yeah, stitch to work. Cause this, this really is bulging out. I don't know if you, you can't really tell on the camera but it's, it's just will not lie flat. Okay. So you see, I put chain stitches on just simple running stitches and um, French knots here, and this is a chain stitch, okay? So I did the same on this one where I just had a simple running stitch and just, you know, just straight stitches and everything. No chain stitches on this one. I'll show you what, um, how to do the chain stitch because it's kind of fun. So I'm gonna do it on this fabric and on dark fabric, I found out that this Clover brand, this Clover brand marker, and I'm sure other companies must have a new product like this, but um, I have this Clover brand. And what it is, is you mark with it and it doesn't show up right away. So it's kind of tricky, okay? But I like this a lot because um, 
it doesn't disappear. You know, it stays on there for it. I've had a piece that stayed on there for like, a, you know, over, I think over two years. Okay, let me see where, I think I'll mark it here. So I'll try to mark a line here. And it's really hard because you can't see it right away. And, the, and it shows up and, you know, kind of, kind of starts to appear. So probably I'm going to have to wait a little bit. Okay, and then I'll mark a, do another mark for the chain stitch. And then maybe this, this is a linen fabric. It seems like I have a lot of linen. Okay, I marked that. Let's hope it shows up. Um, I, when I do the embroidery stitches, I like to use the pearl cotton number five. And it usually comes on hanks. Sometimes they might come on a two. Let's see if I have one. Okay, I, I don't think I have. Yeah, I don't have it on the hand right now. Okay, so my mark is slowly, see how it slowly finally shows up? Well, this mark doesn't disappear until you iron it. It kind of does leave a slight residue. You can see this little residue on there, but um, I, I really, really like this pen. Now I'm going to have to use, let's see, where is it? Uh, this is another Clover brand product. Um, it, it's a needle threader for larger needle eyes, like for embroidery, okay? So I just stick that through the needle eye and then let's see if I can stick this in here. And stick the thread, let me lick it. Okay. Okay, so the thread gets, you know, it gets threaded there. And you do have to be careful. You don't want to break it. So, and then it, it threads your needle, okay? So I am going to show you some, a cup, just some basic stuff. You don't, you don't need to be an embroidery artist, but um, just a few basic stitches so that you can, embellish your mola pieces and once again like i said you should start with a smaller a small mola piece so that you can get the hang of it so we'll start with the chain stitch so i did put the knot in the back okay so with the chain stitch you kind of you make a slight loop okay i'm gonna follow that line i made go back or right next to where you came out originally. Okay. And then do about, um, I don't know how much that is, but okay. So your, your loop is still right here. Okay. You got the loop right there. All right. And then you just gently, don't go too fast, all right? You pull it. Okay. So we still have that loop right there. And then you pull it and that makes your first chain, all right? Now you do that loop again. And then, let me see if I can hold this better. All right. Make that loop again. Not much of a loop, is it? Yeah, okay. You go back right next um, to where you had the first hole, okay? And then you come out about that much, okay? You're still inside that loop. And then you pull. Okay, don't pull too tight, okay? Just enough. So now I've got the second, okay? And you can make this smaller if you want. Um, and you can actually go back to go back into that. You should be able to go back into that same hole if you want. Okay, so I made that a little bit shorter. My thread is way too long. All right. And um, the reason why I like the pearl cotton is it's just it's not the kind with the six strand embroidery floss. Um, so you can't adjust the the size. 
Okay, this, I think this is called number five. I like this number five size. Um, the reason why I like it is because number one, it, it's not in six strands, so it doesn't snag or tangle up real bad. Okay, so here I go again. Let's see if I can do this better. I can go back in the same hole if I want. Okay, I'm making these stitches a little bit smaller so it looks better. I was just doing the first ones bigger so that you can see what I was doing. Uh, it makes a nice big line. But the reason why I like the pearl cotton is it's one twisted uh, strand of thread. And because of the twist, you get this lovely sheen. You know, the light reflects off of it really nice. Okay, we'll do a little bit more. Okay, so I've got this really nice line right here, All right? And I use this, I did this on this piece, just, uh, I think I only did the green, okay? Because I wanted like a, um, I wanted to define that, the shape of that flower. So I did it all around the flower, okay? It's just a thicker line you get. I don't know if I did it on anything else. I don't think so. No, okay. All right, so that's the chain stitch. It's not hard at all. Um, now, the cool thing about the chain stitch is, um, I don't know if it'll do it on this fabric, but I, I'm going to undo the whole thing, okay? And I'll show you what, how it, it might happen. So I just pull and it should all come out, but sometimes it doesn't on certain fabrics because it got snagged, it got caught. Okay, let's see if I can do it. Okay, it looks like it's caught here. Well, maybe if I did this a little bit more neater, it would have been better. It would have come apart. But it's, you're supposed to be able to pull it and the whole thing come, you know, undoes, undoes itself. But this one's not doing that. It's because um, I sewed through one of the woven threads. Okay. So that's a chain stitch. And you want a thick line, you're going to use the chain stitch. Okay. So next, um, let me do a running stitch. I'm going to mark this again. Well, let's see, I'll mark it right here. So with your bowl, as you know, um, it's okay just to do the reverse applique, but I think you're going to like it much better if you added um, different kinds of embroidery threads to it, I mean, stitches to it. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you, okay, I'll just show you the running stitch. Running stitch is easy, just, you know, you're just stitching in and out, in and out, okay. Um, okay, so I'm just going to, and you just wanna aim for even stitching if you can. Oops. And you always don't want to pull it so tight. Like I'll, I'll just do that. And then sometimes I'll just stretch the fabric just so that it's not, you know, pulling that on it, on the fabric. Okay. All right. So that's just the running stitch. And I'll show you what kind of line it makes. Okay, so I pulled it out, but I kind of like stretched it. Okay, and that makes a really nice line. And I'll show you where I use that. Um, I did big ones on this one <clears throat> on the, let's see if you can see it. Okay, and it's it's not 
with contrasty thread. So it's, I have it there. Let's see, where else do I have it? Oh, I have it. I have a pink ones running around this. Okay. So it's not super contrasty, but it just adds a little bit more dimension. Um, I think I have, I haven't finished this piece, but I have some running across here. Okay. A little bit more noticeable there. So I do have running stitches. And sometimes when you do a whole lot, like several rows, you'll get that cool, cool texture going. All right, so that was a running stitch. Then I'll show you um, a back stitch, okay? Back stitch, <clears throat> back stitch is gonna take a lot of thread, but that's okay, all right? Um, sometimes you can buy packs um, they'll sell like packs of embroidery thread. And then if you have a coupon, you're getting a 40% off that pack. That's a good deal. Okay. If you buy these um, threads individually, they do cost a lot. And, you know, you don't get to take advantage of that coupon too much. Okay. So once again, I come out from the bag. I'm going to go and then I'm going to take a stitch about the same. I took a stitch, but I came out to here about the same length, okay? So here's the stitch and then this is, space is about the same. Length. I'm going to go back in the exact same hole I came out. I mean, I went in that first time, if you can. And then you're just repeating that process. You're going to go in and come out where, um, come out like the length of whatever the stitches you took, let me see, okay? So the stitching is budding next to each other versus the running stitch. So I'll do that a couple of times so you can see that. Try to go back into that same hole. If you can't, just go one, one little thread in front of it. Oops. You know, if you go too fast, it gets tangled up. All right. And I love this stitching. I haven't really used it that much on the molas. And the reason why is, um, I don't know why I didn't use it on the molas, but I didn't. Let's see, I'm gonna do a couple more. I notice I'm not using embroidery hoop. Um, I, I just don't like to use embroidery hoop because I just, never learned how to use, never learned. Um, when I first learned, I didn't use an embroidery hoop, so I got used to it. Um, if you're gonna do some serious embroidery, maybe, you know, of course, you, you, embroidery hoop is, is you, it's important to get your tension, your stitching um, even. Okay, so this is the back stitch. Okay, it makes a nice line. Uh, it's a more defined line versus the dot, dot, dot line. Okay, so you get a really nice strong line, All right? The chain stitch is gonna give you a fatter line, All right? So the back side of the back stitch looks like this. See that? So it does take a lot of thread, All right? And the chain stitch, the back side looks like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to do a stem stitch. The stem stitch is like a stem, like a stem of a flower. It's, um, it's just like the back stitch, except for you're going to have, you're going to um, stagger it a little bit. Let me show you. Okay, <clears throat> so once again, I come out from the back, all right? And I'm going to take, let's see. Yeah, actually it's not like a back stitch at all. Okay, so I took one stitch, all right? That's a tiny one. Okay, I'm gonna take a big long stitch so I can show you better. Nice. All right, let me try that again. Okay. So I took a long stitch so you can see that better, all right? Now, I'm going to come 
out a um, little bit below and to the side of that stitch. I mean, you can go up, you can go almost halfway. I'll go halfway. So I'm coming out halfway down and then I'm going to try to take a stitch that's about the same length as the first one I did. Let's see if that works, okay? So this is a, a big version of it, okay? Um, I, I went down a little bit too far. So we repeat that again. Let me try that again. Let me do a couple of these and then that way it'll come out better. always doesn't look good when you do huge stitches, okay? All right, I'm not sure if this will show up, all right. Um, can you see where I staggered it? Okay, I came, I, I come out on the side, all right? And um, so it, it's kind of like slashes at an angle, okay? And this does make a nice um, strong line, but it's not going to be, it, it's it's in between the back stitch and the chain stitch width. So, and it's great for outlining stuff. Let's see if I can do a couple more. I'll do some longer ones, see if that will make a difference. Yeah, I find this um, this one a little bit difficult because you kind of have to be um, kind of precise here. Otherwise, it, it just looks like a hairy mess of bunch of stitches. Okay. All right. So, but it makes a really good solid line. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Okay, let's see, where is it? Here, is that it? Okay. Um, so we have the <clears throat> running stitch, the first one, the back stitch, and we have the stem stitch, and then there's the chain stitch. Okay, so if you look on the back side, it's kind of cool because it actually uses, you have less of a mess in the back compared to the um, back stitch, okay? So this is a really nice stitch. It just takes a little bit more focus. And maybe that's why I didn't use it on my molas because I was just watching something on the computer while I was doing it and I didn't want to have to pay too much attention to where my stitches were coming out. Okay, so we have those that you can embellish your piece with. Um, I'm not sure if I showed you the French knot last time, but I might as well just add it right here just in case. All right, let's see. And the French knot is, it, it makes it look like you got little tiny beads on it. It is three dimensional. Uh, let's see, here we go. Can you see it's three dimensional? Okay, and I've got a bigger one here. Uh, I think these are the same size, yeah. But I've got little tiny ones here. All right, so you can um, you can uh, you either do one, two, or three. Okay, so I'm going to do one first. So you put your needle where it came out, make a loop, hold on to that spot because you don't want that to go away. Okay, and then you try to go back in the same spot or right next to it. And because this is embroidery thread, um, even though I just did one little loop, you, you get a pretty good substantial uh, round dot there. 
Okay, I'm gonna do two next to it. So once again, you put your needle right where it came out, hold it, one, two, don't make the loops too tight. Okay, keep holding it there, that's important. All right, and then go back into the same hole if you can. Okay, so now I've got a slightly bigger one. Okay, three, three loops this time. One, two, three. Okay, go back to where you came out or right next to it. Okay, so that's gonna give me a bigger. Now, when you, when you go beyond three, it becomes kind of like, uh, it becomes cylindrical in shape. So let me try to do four. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's four. And um, okay, so four, it really sticks out. Do you see how it just really becomes like a, a, a insect actually? Okay, so I'm gonna do seven to show you how it becomes long. Okay, so you got seven loops and that thread has to go through all seven loops, okay? Then it becomes this long thing. So you can't really, I mean, you could go back into the same hole, but it really, where is my hole? It came out. Oh, so it really becomes, um, it really sticks out like that. Let's see. So a lot of times the when you do something beyond three, um, you don't go back into the same hole. You go kind of away from it a little bit. And it's called the buñuel nut. So it becomes like a little dash, but thicker, okay? So you can use this in your, you know, mola. Um, it could even be like the eye of an insect or antenna, okay? So those are some of the stitches you can use. Now, I also, um, and of course, you know, you can get an embroidery book and find all kinds of other fancy stitches if you wanna try it out. Um, I, I also noticed that they had a lot of these uh, straight stitches going, um, let me see if I can do it with this amount of thread. All right, let's see. All right. So they had a parallel line and then they would go, and you kind of have to, um, let me see if I could, oops, I'm gonna have to get thread. Let's see, I'll try it with the six strand floss, all right? Now, the good thing about the six, strand floss, embroidery floss, is you can split the threads and sometimes use two or sometimes use four or three or even five. So you get different thicknesses, all right? I'm just gonna go ahead and use all six so you can see the design better. All right, I have drawn parallel lines. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so I can either go and come out, okay? I'm gonna hit the other one. I can either go across, which is probably better, okay? So I'm going across. Make sure this line is straight. Now I've got these really um, wide. And the thing you have to be careful is, um, if you have them this spaced out, it might catch onto things. So um, you have to decide that. Okay, let me get this out of the way. All right. All right, so, so see, you can do that kind of thing. Now, if you just keep going across because see the back is like that. Um, if I go this way and this way and this way and this way, 
you're going to get a different effect. So I don't know if it's noticeable on camera, but let me try that. So I'm going to go over, okay? But this time I'm going to come out there. What happens if you do that, then the the stitches don't lay, the stitches don't lay straight across. And I'll show you what they, they tend to favor going at an angle. Okay, let me do a couple here so you can see what I mean. And it's really subtle, but you know, if you know it's there, it might bother you. Okay. All right, let me show you what happens here. <clears throat> okay, so see how these are straight up and down. But because I, I went, I came out here. I mean, I went in here, went across, went in here, came out here. If I, if I go this way, and then on the back side, if I go across, I come out here, and on the back side, I just go across it favors going in that direction. So these aren't exactly laying straight compared to these. So there is a difference, All right? Okay, um, and I think I use that on this one. It's not perfect, but you know, it's interesting, adds some um, interest. Okay, so now um, the beads, let me talk to you a little bit about beads. Okay, I just happened to have a bunch of beads that somebody gave me or, you know, I got into the habit of buying beads. So they're all different sizes and shapes. You will need be a bead needle. Um, I don't know where mine is right now. I think it's over there. Oh. Now there's apparently different types of bead needles. I'm not, I'm not a, you know, I don't do bead sewing too much, but, um, I just do basic. Okay, let me see if I can go find the needle. <clears throat> okay, here's the, it was my mess here. Okay, so, um, these are bead needles and they are extremely, extremely thin and delicate. And they probably had the smallest eyes. Um, I, I, I don't even know how they make these eyes. They're so small that it's very difficult for me to thread it. Apparently they have a new type of needle, which is about bead needles about this long. And it's made out of two, very, very thin uh, wires. And if you kind of flex it, it opens up in the middle and you can, you know, thread it that way. So it acts like that kind of needle, it kind of acts like, like this guy, you know, and then um, if you flex it, the, the center opens up like that. Okay, and then it flushes back. Now, um, I don't know where I put those needles. I've got them somewhere. But I've been using this, and the reason why you need to use a very, very thin, and I use the long ones, um, they, do, they do have short ones too, um, is because um, I have a bunch of, well, the beads just have the smallest eyes and you know, regular needle won't go through it. So I have to use these. Um, trying to thread, regular thread through these are a nightmare. So I, um, get yourself bead thread and I do know they come in um, white and black and maybe they come in different colors I'm not, I'm not quite sure but these are a little bit stiffer and um, you know what I didn't think about using a magnifying glass but I should use a magnifying glass because some nights I can't see it okay so they thread a lot easier because the regular threads are a little bit thicker and they um, fray at the end. So 
And then if you're having trouble with this, you can always you know, get an extremely sharp scissors and snip the end so it's not frayed. But um, that's what I use, okay? Um, because it, you don't wanna use regular uh, thread and they're stronger too anyway, okay? Um, and I just tie a knot at the end, make sure it's really secure. What? So these guys are very, very delicate. Um, they bend easily and everything. However, if you had what is called seed beads, and those are the extremely tiny, tiny beads, you know, it will go through. Some once in a while you'll find a bead that might the hole might be a little bit clogged or something, but um, the seed beads, you can buy them in a little uh, container or they come in strands like this, but they're extremely tiny. And um, if you spill them, they go everywhere. So, and you may want to have like, um, a, you know, faux suede cloth or maybe even a little piece of velvet or something to put your beads on. But it, it, let me show you how tiny this is. I can't even see the hole. You just got to kind of feel it. But it is very, very tiny, okay? So these are some of the smaller beads, all right? So I'm going to just run this through. So that's a seed bead. Now, the seed bead might not show up, but if you have several on here, um, they might create a pretty cool texture. I just happen to have a lot of different kinds of beads. And so I will use all kinds of beads. And on this one, because I was trying to make it look like it was pomegranate seeds, I went ahead and used um, as many of the red beads as I can, I can find. And then once in a while, you know, because I, you know, my eyesight was going bad. This one's pink, this one's orange, and this one's probably golden. And this one looks like it's pale lavender, but that actually added interest to it. So I'm just kind of putting beads on. I wasn't quite sure if this was gonna work or not. Um, so, but I just kept going because I can always undo it if I don't like it. But I, I think since this piece is going to become a 3D, like a relief piece anyway, I might as well add the beads on there. Um, so I'm just gonna keep doing that and not sure how much. I know I'm going to put a concentration of them here and there and maybe at the tips of that and maybe just sprinkle some around here. I'm not sure if I'll add more here. It feels like it needs to. So that's what I'm gonna work on. And the key with, uh, the thing with the molas is, you know, you, you don't try to wanna, you don't wanna give yourself a deadline. You don't wanna try to finish it. It should be like a slow stitch process where you just kind of have fun with it, you know, and not worry too much about where it's going. All right. So this one won't work as a cushion, you know, cover, pillow cover, because I've got beads on it. And, and um, yeah, it won't feel good to lay on the thing. But I meant it as a wall hanging. So it'll get wrapped around canvas and stitched all the way through the canvas and everything and stuff, okay? So it's gonna be a while before I finish this, um, especially since I have to go get the canvas and we'll find the canvas, okay? So that's it for today. And then um, we'll see what we're gonna do on our last session, okay? So we will see you then, bye.